Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for July through October. Currently, Great Basin fire activity continues to pick up with many smaller fires around the Great Basin, which is indicated in the yellow and red dots. Still a little bit of prescribed burning going on in the purple areas, um, but those are definitely on the downward trend, especially with recent very hot and dry conditions and more upcoming heat and dryness across the Great Basin. We have seen some large fires and um, also some growth, especially in the lower elevation brush and grasses. So that will continue and increase going forward. Over the last seven to 14 days, we've seen dry conditions over western and southern areas of Nevada and even into parts of the Snake River Plain in Idaho. Some of the wetter areas have been over southern and eastern Utah with a surge of moisture and into northern Arizona. And those areas are above normal with precipitation for the last two weeks. Other areas that we've seen cold fronts bring some showers and thunderstorms to the north, still generally below normal in most of those areas, but there are some pockets of near normal conditions due to those thunderstorms. Over the last 30 days, we've seen very warm temperatures across the Great Basin as we've seen several heat waves move in throughout June, bringing some record heat at times over the last month. Combined with these hot temperature, we've seen very dry conditions over southern and western Nevada and across northern Nevada, parts of northern Utah and southern Idaho. Again, mostly the precipitation over the last month has been concentrated across southern and eastern Utah, but we did have some thunderstorms associated with the cold front in central and eastern Nevada that did bring some brief heavier precipitation. Since October 1st, the beginning of the water year, we've seen pockets of near normal precipitation across southern Idaho, northern Nevada and northern Utah. However, if we look back to the beginning of January, you can see some heavier precipitation into parts of Utah and also into parts of southern and western Nevada as well due, due to some timely snowstorms. Looking at where this precipitation matters, when it falls and what it does for our fine field growth. Looking at the monsoon rains in July and August, these areas on the left in blue and green are areas that are really highly dependent on precipitation during July and August to perpetuate fine fuel growth for the next year. You can see for the Great Basin, we saw some near to above normal precipitation in parts of southwest Utah and parts of the Arizona Strip and far southeast Nevada. And all of these areas, if we do get rainfall during that time period, which we did last year, we typically get fine fuel growth the following year. Now on the flip side, looking at winter and spring precipitation, the image on the left shows the areas in oranges and yellows as areas where precipitation in the winter and spring is what drives a fine fuel growth for the fire season. And you can see that's really much of the lower elevations of the Great Basin. So looking at where we saw those conditions, this is from January 1st. You can see we did see above normal precipitation over Southern Nevada, Western and Northern Nevada, up into Idaho and Northern Utah. So we kind of have a mixed bag of precipitation that really fell at the right time for many areas of the Great Basin to see that fine fuel growth this year. So what about two years ago? We have had two wet winters. Last winter going into last fire season was very wet, had very heavy snowpack. Some areas it was historic snowpack, other areas just above normal. However, for central Idaho, going into last fire season, we were still below normal for snowpack as we were this last season. So central Idaho has seen two years of just below normal snowpack. The rest of the Great Basin this past winter saw at least near normal or above normal snowpack. Parts of the Sierra Front and Western Nevada only really saw one or two good snowstorms. So much of the season, the snowpack was just below normal. But again, two years of wet winters has definitely helped our drought conditions, but also has given us a lot of moisture and precipitation for fuel growth. So looking at the precipitation totals, that was the snowpack. This is the total precipitation in liquid form. And you can see, again, we've had two wet years back to back in many areas. So what this has done for the drought is we have almost no drought across the Great Basin. We do have some pockets of abnormally dry conditions over Eastern and Southern Utah into the Arizona Strip. These areas will likely see some improvement during the fire season, um, possibly as monsoon moisture does occur occasionally. Further north, these abnormally dry conditions over Idaho and northwest Nevada into Wyoming likely could see some intensification going through the fire season because we are expecting drier conditions in those areas. So looking at what all that precipitation did the last two years, it drastically changed our drought conditions. So two years ago on the left, you can see we were still seeing mostly severe to exceptional drought across most of Nevada or all of Nevada and Utah into Arizona and also southern Idaho with even some exceptional drought conditions. 
Fast forward to this year after two wet winters and some wet areas of monsoon precipitation, we have again removed much of those drought concerns. Looking at our drought index, however, lately, since we have seen very hot and dry conditions in June, you can see uh, we can, from the evaporative demand drought index, some rapidly drying areas of western Nevada, also into central and southern Idaho into Wyoming, and some pockets of southern Nevada into Utah. So this is more indicative of flash drought. So again, this is just telling us that our fuels have dried very rapidly for very different conditions than we saw just a few weeks ago. So what does drought mean across the Great Basin? Well, this is showing our drought time series from the year 2000 on the left to the current conditions. And you can see the cycles of where we have several years of significant drought, followed by a few years of less drought, and then the cycle continues. So right now we are coming out of a very significant three or four year drought period. And again, generally no drought across the Great Basin. What these black boxes indicate are years in the lower elevations predominantly where we see above normal or well above normal fire or acres burned with fire activity. So again, you're seeing all of this happen in years that we either have no drought or very little drought because we have more moisture and more moisture perpetuates more fine fuel growth, which really drives those larger low elevation fires. So again, that's the period we're entering. So we have very big concerns for some of our lower elevation areas that we know have above normal fine fuel loading because of the recent moisture. So looking at where these areas are with respect to fine fuels, this image on the left is a model indicator and it has been represented by Ground Truth as well and verified in many of these areas. This shows where we are expecting above normal or higher fine fuel loading, both with carryover from last year combined with new fine fuel growth this year. So the areas in greens and blues are really what we're looking at. So for the Great Basin, that's much of Southern Idaho, parts of Northern Utah and especially northern and northeastern Nevada, and then also even over small parts of western Nevada. We are seeing some of those pockets as well in areas that we saw that, that above normal precipitation in the monsoon season where we needed it most over western Arizona Strip, southwest Utah, and far southeastern Nevada. The image on the right is not showing fine fuel loading, but it is showing fuel continuity of our cheatgrass. So areas in blue in the image on the right indicate even though the fuel loading or total fuel might not be exceptionally large, the continuous grasses are significant over western and northern Nevada, southern Idaho, and even down into western Utah. So again, a lot of concerns with respect to our fine fuel conditions this year. Due to the warm and dry conditions or hot and dry conditions we've seen, our 10-hour fuel moisture, more indicative of our grass dryness, obviously critically dry over the southern half of the Great Basin and definitely decreasing up north. 100-hour fuel moisture, which is more representative of our sagebrush conditions, has really dried out rapidly over the last few weeks, and we're seeing many areas where the brush is either at critical conditions or approaching. And then our 1,000 hours, more indicative of our timber areas, definitely showing drying signs as well. Our current ERCs across the Great Basin, we did have some recent moisture move through, but we still have ERCs above the 80th or 90th percentile in pockets, really across much of the Great Basin, especially in the south across Wyoming, and then even drying over Idaho and western Nevada. But these ERCs will rapidly be increasing going through the first half of July with expected very hot and dry conditions. Some of our ERC charts show, you can see the image on the top right is the Sierra front in western Nevada, showing ERCs rapidly climbing, even though that rapid climb in southwest Utah. So we're really getting into really the peak conditions of our fuel so far this year. So putting everything together, now we'll look at the forecast going forward. This is the forecast for the next seven days. You can see dry conditions. Any moisture we're seeing up in Idaho or parts of Utah is really just occurring in the first couple of days of July. The rest of this period is expected to be very dry. Going through the middle of the month, the eight to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center shows well above normal temperatures, again, really highlighting that strong ridge of high pressure that's moving in for the first half of July and should be giving us very hot, even near record-breaking heat over parts of especially the western half of the Great Basin. This will also be coupled with dryness. This moisture moving into the southern and eastern area of the Great Basin will likely be occurring closer to the middle of the month and probably not above normal with respect to precipitation since this is typically when our monsoon 
rains are really starting. So I would say it's probably near normal or even slightly below normal depending on how the moisture works in. But this will also be moving in after a period of seven to 10 days of hot and dry weather. So again, as this moisture increases, we're looking for more thunderstorms and really pushing us into possibly a critical period going into the middle of the month. So this is a model prediction of precipitation from now through July 15th. And again, after our heat wave and our dry conditions the next seven days or so, as we get into the middle of July, even with that moisture moving up, these are really, it's really not much precipitation for Nevada and Idaho and even northern Utah, probably very spotty with these thunderstorms. So really more concerned with drier thunderstorms after the heat plus windy conditions as some of these troughs move through. The only areas that this moisture may help to dampen fire danger a little bit will be over northern Arizona and possibly southern and eastern Utah. The rest of the Great Basin are very high concerns with this moisture moving in. So looking at our predictive services outlook for the next four months, you can see top row is temperature, generally showing this cooler trend along the west coast, and that's really more indicative of these troughs moving in. But this first half of July really will be very hot. So I would say this outlook um, probably maybe later in July is when those troughs start moving in. But for the first half of the month, very hot weather. And then if these troughs continue to move in going into August, that really means more wind for the Great Basin. Even if no temperatures are near normal, that's still very hot for the time of year. And then continued warming in September and October. And then looking at the precipitation, just overall dry. Really uh, keeping that monsoon moisture more to the east targeted over the Four Corners area and will only get into some of the fringes of the moisture at times in the Great Basin. So we will see showers and thunderstorms in probably all areas of the Great Basin going through July and August. However, anything but Utah, so Idaho, Nevada, Wyoming, those areas, moisture totals and precipitation totals should be very spotty, um, hit or miss, and just not not very much with overall moisture. So we'll be more concerned with fire starts, the wind following some of this moisture and some of this drier lightning. This is showing the monsoon forecast for July and August, just really highlighting that drier than normal. Um, again, that darker blue, that would be more um, cooler temperatures on the West Coast. So really great basin still hot, even if we're near normal. And then precipitation, just an overall dry signature for the Great Basin. Although I would think parts of Utah might still see uh, more of that consistent moisture at times. So putting everything together, here's our outlook for July through October. Um, you can see July, August, and September, a large area of above normal fire potential over the northern half of the Great Basin. Most of that will be in the lower elevation to mid elevation grasses, where, the, where we'll have above normal fine fuel loading, exceptionally dry brush with these very hot conditions in June and going into July. And um, again, any dry lightning or wind that continues to move through those areas. The areas of central Idaho that we're highlighting towards August and September are more for the below normal snowpack. And the, again, very hot and dry conditions in June and July. So we expect a very active fire season for both low and high elevations in some of these areas over the northern and western half of the Great Basin. This area down in parts of southern Nevada into southwest Utah above normal for July, again indicating still seeing hotter and drier conditions than normal going into July prior to the arrival of those thunderstorms. So again, still seeing that above normal percent potential until maybe later in July or towards August when hopefully some of that moisture settles into some of those areas. That concludes our webcast for this month. Check back next month for the latest updates.